Hi, in this video, you're going to learn how to integrate TestRail with Azure DevOps. The integration will allow you to link your testing artifacts to issues, track test coverage, report bugs without leaving TestRail, and build traceability throughout your entire testing program. First of all, in the administration area, I'm selecting projects because I want to integrate with a specific project. If you need a global integration for your whole TestRail instance, select Integration and follow the same steps. Under the Project Administration area, I'm clicking on Defects. To configure the Defect View URL, just follow this format. HTTPS, then the Azure DevOps URL and the project name, followed by Underline Work Items, slash Edit, slash ID, between percents. Let's check how I got my Defect View URL. This is my Azure DevOps instance, and you can find the first part, the URL here, dev.azure.com. Then you need the project name, which will include the organization name as well. In this case, organization one slash e-commerce project. Note that spaces are converted to this symbol in the URL, so always take the address exactly as it is in the URL. Finally, add the static part, which is underline work items slash edit slash ID and you have a defect view URL to add in TestRail. The defect add URL requires exactly the same information identified in the previous step, but with a different static part at the end. So the Azure DevOps URL, then the organization and the project name, followed by underline work items slash create slash issue. I suggest using issue, but in case you're using an agile or scrum process, you can replace issue with bug or any other type you may prefer. Next, select the Azure DevOps Cloud plugin or server plugin. Below, you'll find the configuration box where you need to provide the address, the project, the user, and a password. The address is exactly your Azure DevOps URL, including your organization name. The project is your project name, in this case, e-commerce project. The user is the email address you use to log into Azure DevOps and the password is your password or a personal access token. Let's see how you can get a token in Azure DevOps. First, click on user settings, then personal access tokens. Here, you wanna click on new token and provide some details like name, expiration date, the kind of access you wanna give and so on. Finally, click on create. I've already generated a token, which I added to the plugin configuration in TestRail. Scrolling down, you can see some push types and push fields. These are the fields which all appear when you push a defect directly from TestRail to Azure DevOps. In the same way you can see some bugs and issue settings, you can set them on and off. Try to keep on the fields you already use in Azure DevOps, so you will see the same fields in TestRail. Once it's done, click on Save Project and you're done on the configuration part. But what can you do with the defect integration? Let's see. I'm going to my Azure DevOps integration project where I have some test cases and test runs, but let's create a new one. This will be test run 1.3 and will include all my test cases. Okay, now imagine I'm executing the tests and I find a bug. For example, the valid login is not working. So I wanna set the status as failed and log a defect. With the integration, you can click on the push button and you will see a form with the fields you set to on before. You can add a description, define the issue type, the status, assign it to someone, and define a priority. Right now, reproduction steps and system information are disabled because they're not enabled in my Azure DevOps. If you want these fields, you need to enable them there first. Once it's done, click on Submit. The defect is created immediately in Azure DevOps, and the ID is automatically added to TestRail. Now, just click on Add Result to see the link created between the two systems. Back to the test run. Let's check out the details for the test I'm working on. Under this failed execution, you see the defect I logged from TestRail, and if you hover over the ID, it will show you details from the defect. Now, let's check if the bug appears in my Azure DevOps instance. As soon as I refresh it, you can see the same defect here. If I click on this, the details are exactly as I entered in TestRail. Let's execute more tests. For example, this test also failed, but instead of using the push functionality, I'll click the add button here. This redirects you to Azure DevOps, where you can create a new work item. You can define the title, add a description, and save it. This bug is now logged with the help of the add button. 
The only disadvantage is that you need to manually add the ID in test rail. I know the defect ID is 53, so I'm typing it here and adding the result. This is how you can push or add bug reports with the integration. Another interesting feature you get with the integration is that you can see real-time information about the bugs in test rail. Just click on defects in a particular test run and you will get a summary of all the bugs generated during execution. You can hover over it to check the details and here you can see the status of the bug in Azure DevOps. Now let's configure the reference integration. Again, in the administration area, I'm selecting projects, then the project I want to integrate with. This time, I'm going to the References tab. Just like the defects integration, you'll need to specify the view URL and the add URL in a specific format. The formats are very similar. First, HTTPS, then the Azure DevOps URL, the organization, the project name, and the static part, which is work items slash edit slash ID. And for the reference add URL, the pattern is the same, but with a different static part at the end. Under Plugin, choose Azure DevOps Cloud or Server and configure the integration in the text box below. Specify the address of your Azure DevOps instance, including the organization, the project name, the user, and the password. You can use the same personal token access you created before. Finally, click on Save Project and the configuration is done. Let's go to our project and understand how the references work in test rail. I have these test cases here, and if you click on them, you can see the references field, which is nothing but a link to user stories, requirements, or issues in an external system. For example, in Azure DevOps, I have this user story 47, which is about login scenario requirements. And this user story is mentioned in test rail by adding its ID to the reference field. You can mention more than one user story here, just separate them with a comma. In this case, the reference one here points out to another requirement. So this test case has requirements coming from two different stories, and the information is fetched directly from Azure DevOps. If something changes there, you will see the changes reflected here in real time. When you hover over a reference, you'll see this widget displaying all the requirements for the corresponding epics. Another interesting view for the references is on your test case repository. To see them here, Click on the columns icon and add the reference column. When you update the columns, you will see the references for all test cases, and you can immediately check the test cases without references. For example, for the forgot password test case, I know I have an epic in Azure DevOps. Let's find it. The ID number is 48. Okay, so let's go back to test rail and edit the test case. Under references, I'm going to add the ID and click on save. Now, this test case is referencing that epic. You can add references to test runs, plans, and milestones as well. After adding references, you can quickly generate test coverage and traceability reports in test rail. To do that, navigate to the Reports tab. You probably want a kind of test coverage or traceability matrix report. There's a report template which is exactly that, the comparison for references. Let's configure this report. At the top, you can obviously change the name and add a description, but the most important part is down here in the reports options. First of all, you want to check your tests against specific user stories or requirements, so tick the following references only. Then you'll need a list of IDs from Azure DevOps. In my project, you can see my requirement epics and their IDs on the left. Back to test rail. I'm adding those IDs in the text box, one per line. I'm going to add other IDs as well, so you can see some references without test cases in the report. After that, go to the Sections and Test Runs tab. Here, you want to select the sections or some specific test runs you want in your traceability matrix. For example, let's include these three test runs. Then, you just click on the Add Report button. These types of reports can take a couple of minutes to generate, but I have an example here to show you already. At the top of the report, you can check the progress of your test runs. And scrolling down, you'll find the references IDs. For each reference, you can check the tests associated with it. Reference 1 has one test case covering it, and 47 has three. But for reference 2, there's no coverage so far. You might want to create a test case or add a reference if you haven't done so. This report gives you a comprehensive view about the test coverage, and it also shows information about the execution. You can immediately see which test cases are failing or still untested. This is how you can integrate TestRail with Azure DevOps.
If you use both platforms together, meeting compliance requirements and understanding the risks of each release becomes much easier. Thank you for watching.